I haven't always used a wheelchair. Six years ago, I was able-bodied. I was a mom, a business owner, an athlete, probably a lot like many of you, with similar hopes and dreams and wishes and desires. But it all changed one night. I was riding in a car, holding my fiance's hand, and five random bullets rang out. And we both sustained life-altering injuries. I was shot in the middle of the back and paralyzed in the middle of my chest down. And there are these moments of metamorphosis where we go from being one thing to something completely else, and that heartbeat where I went from being a person with an able body to someone who is disabled was terrifying. I didn't know who I was going to be on the other side of that. And in the intervening years, I've learned that while life is fragile, the human spirit is strong and tenacious. And I wasn't alone in working to rebuild a big, bold, beautiful life after something so catastrophic. And so tonight, I sit here, a mom, a business owner, and an athlete, probably a lot like many of you, with similar hopes and dreams and wishes and desires. It hasn't always been easy. <laughs> Living life at butt level, I've certainly learned my share of lessons. <laughs> really. First off, no matter what they tell you on television, from where I sit, pajama jeans are always a bad idea. That Potter kid's got nothing on me. He's got that cloak of invisibility, sure. And he's got that polyjuice potion that allows him to appear to be something other than his true essence. This chair does that for me in public spaces. Now, it works for my advantage. At the mall, I slip through completely unseen. No one splooges me with lotion, spritzes me with perfume. No one jumps out of the little kiosk and tries to upgrade my cell phone plan or thread my eyebrows. And then I run into people who think that somehow my ears are connected to the use of my legs. And they'll talk really loud and really slow. This also works for people who don't speak your language. Pregnant women are the other group that I know have experienced this. People think it's okay to pet me in public. I'm not a cuddly sort of person, really I'm not. And nothing warms my cockles like being fondled by random strangers. Some folks set the bar so low on their expectations for people with disabilities that I exceeded by simply wearing matching socks, really. <laughs> you guys let me off the hook way too easy if I'm awesome by simply driving or working. And then, <laughs> if I sit too long in one place, people give me spare change. <laughs> this used to be very insulting to me, but I've got a kid in college, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be out in the lobby in a little bit. This is what it looks like to be confined to a wheeled chair or wheelchair bound. I am a full-time wheelchair user, but this chair doesn't confine me. It liberates me. I couldn't go anywhere without it. And then people stress over what they're supposed to call me. Am I crippled? Am I disabled? Am I differently abled? Am I handicapped? My personal favorite, handicapable. Out of everything, I mostly prefer to be called Jennifer. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, don't mess my timing up here. Really, I'm exactly who I was before my injury. I'm a little bit of sugar, a little bit of spice, a whole lot of snark. I just move around differently than I ever did. And I've started raising money for spinal cord injury research. I've done the Rock and Roll Half Marathon twice in a standard wheelchair. And in 2010, I did it with this Motley crew. It was a fantastic day. And as we were out on the course, uh, there was this other runner that we were pacing. He'd pass me, and then I'd pass him. And along the way, to encourage me, he'd go, good job, wheelchair. Way to go, wheelchair. Awesome job, wheelchair. Finally, one of my friends yelled, dude, you think the chair's hot? You should meet the chick in it. <laughs> I get it, I really do. Before my injury, I don't know that I would have looked past the wheels to see the woman, and it would have been a shame to miss how wicked awesome Miss Gina is. I would have been afraid I'd embarrass myself, say the wrong thing, where do you look? I think that as kids, we're taught not to stare, and as adults, that translates into don't look, and pretty soon people with disabilities start appearing to be foreign and tragic, maybe even a little bit dangerous somehow. If you can see past the labels, it's so much helpful. You know, I, I am a person with a disability, just Jennifer, a chick in a chair. Thank you. <laughs>